morning, everyone. And good to see you as we gather together to worship God. And we remember those who will be watching this service uh, through YouTube and uh, Facebook. And they may be part of our worship here in Drumlega this morning. We read in Psalm number 96. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. So we're going to do that as we sing of God's salvation in the great uh, gospel hymn that tells us of that salvation. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Because Jesus was like us, 
and he identifies with us. And yet, he was completely different from us, that he was the perfect Son of God. And so today as we gather as the family of God here in this church building, we pray that you would come amongst us by your Holy Spirit, and that we would sense your presence, know your nearness, and help each one of us to see Jesus and to claim to Christ and to love him more and more. Forgive us for not listening to your gospel message. Forgive us when we drift away from you and drift into sin. And help us to return to you today. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. So hear our prayer because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, you want to come up to the front. He'll be first up today. Okay. It's going to be a race. It's going to be a draw, I think. And then Sam will take a seat. Great. You all seated here. Okay, how's everybody today? All good. I'm going to show you something up here on the screen. <coughs> what kind of face is that? Somebody tell me. Yes, you can hand up first. A smiley face. A smiley face. When do you have? When would your mum or dad have a smiley face? When do you think? When they're happy. When they're happy. Yes. And I wonder what could you do? What do you do that would make your mum or dad happy? Any ideas? When would your mum and dad be happy with you? Would they be happy if I give you th if you did well at school? Yes. Would they be happy with you if you got into trouble at school and you were fighting at school? No. no. Would they be happy with you if you tidied your bedroom? No. Would they be happy with you if you made a mess all over the kitchen? No. No. Would they be happy with you if they helped out in the farm and you did a bit of work outside? No. Yeah. Would they be happy with you if you did your homework without having to be told to do it? No. Yep. Yeah. Right. So you know what to do. <laughs> I want to tell you about God the Father. And he was happy with his son. Here's a man called John the Baptist. And he lived at the same time as Jesus. And he wore kind of funny clothes. He wore clothes made out of camel's hair. Like rough. Can you imagine making, wearing a coat out of like horse hair? Be all itchy, wouldn't it? He ate, do you know what he ate for his lunch every day? Does anybody know he ate? Hmm? He didn't eat the camel. No, that's a good, eh? good thought. <laughs> Might have been better eating the camel, but he ate locusts, grasshoppers, spiders, and he ate honey. And he told people, he said, you need to get ready. Jesus is coming, and you need to say sorry for your sins. And then he baptized people. He brought them into the river and he poured water over them. And they said sorry to God. One day Jesus came along. Do you know what John the Baptist did? He took Jesus down into the river. And Jesus was also baptized. You can see it up here. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. Now Jesus didn't have to say sorry because he was perfect. And when he came up out of the water... A big voice came from heaven and God spoke and he said, Jesus is my son and I'm pleased with him. Jesus was doing everything that God wanted him to do and God the Father was pleased with him. God the Father was pleased with Jesus. Now how do you think God will be pleased with us? If we read the Bible, if we come to church, we say our prayers and if we try to help people and if we love Jesus and love other people, that's how God will be pleased with us. And God will have a smiley face. God will have a smiley face if we please God every day. And how can we please God every day? We could say our, we could read the Bible, we could love Jesus and we could love others. And we could tidy our bedroom. <coughs> and do all those things that uh, we should do. 
And there's a PowerPoint away. Go. Oh. So that's we'll have to pick another heaven out of the white hymn book, Hannah, but we'll get there. So you want to please God and we can please God when we do the things He wants us to do. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for our children and we pray that they and us, all of us, would please you, our Heavenly Father, by loving you and loving others. So help us to please you every day. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go back now. We're going to have to sing from the white. Oh. Comes and goes. Intermittent. Okay. Well, we'll maybe sing out of the white handbook number. Number 39. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Number 39 in your white handbook. And we'll sing, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning.
health and strength and the ability to be in church here today. And we remember those who are not well and we pray your presence to be with them and those listening to this service. We thank you for all your goodness and your greatness and your faithfulness to us and accept these gifts and use them for your glory in this place and to the very ends of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our children can leave for Sunday school at the stage in our service. Father God, we thank you for your church in this place. And so we pray you build up your church, build up your kingdom. Bless the work of our Bible class and Sunday school so that our young people would hear of the love of Jesus and respond to that love. Thank you for our Sunday school teachers and leaders and all who give up their time to serve you in our church, our office bearers, our leaders, and all who carry responsibility within this church. And so may they and all of us draw on the deep reserves of your love. And we take a moment to pray for a particular aspect now of the life of this church. We look beyond our church and we pray for this word, a word that you made, a word that you love, a world that is broken and hurting. And we could think of the war in Ukraine. We could think of Iran and persecution. We could think of hunger in uh, Ethiopia. And so, Lord, we pray for this world. And may your spirit bring healing and peace and better days. God of all comfort and compassion, God of all grace, Draw alongside persecuted people who are suffering. People who are persecuted because they are Christians. Bring help to all who are being tortured or imprisoned for their faith. We remember them and pray your grace to be with them, to strengthen them. So Lord, we look to you in all these things. And we pray for your help. And bless us as we come to study your word. Because we ask it. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> We're going to continue our work in the book of Hebrews, and today we come to Hebrews chapter 2. And Hebrews chapter 2, if you have a few Bible, it's on page 276. 276. And you can follow along and we read God's Word together. Hebrews chapter 2. 
to page 276 in the New Testament section of your Bible. This is God's Word. That is why we must hold on all the more firmly to the truths we have heard, so that we do not drift away. The message given to our ancestors by the angels was shown to be true, and anyone who did not follow it or obey it received the punishment he deserved. How then shall we escape if we pay no attention to such a great salvation? The Lord himself first announced this salvation, and those who heard him proved to us that it is true. At the same time, God added his witnesses to theirs by performing all kinds of miracles and wonders, and by distributing the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. We'll just end there for a moment. What has happened there, or what we've read there, is that God spoke to people in the past. And he used angels at times. But some of the people didn't listen to the angels in the Old Testament, and they received God's punishment. But now God has spoken to us through Jesus. And if those people who didn't listen to angels were punished, well then there's no excuse for us when God's Son speaks to us. So we'll continue. God has not placed the angels as rivers over the new world to come, the world of which we speak. Instead, it is said somewhere in the scriptures, What is man, O God, that you should think of him? Mere man that you should care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honour and made him ruler over all things. When Jesus came to earth, he was lower than the angels. He came to earth, the angels are in heaven, and Jesus came, the Son of Man, Jesus, and came to earth and he was lower than the angels for a short time. It says that God made him ruler over all things. This clearly includes everything. We do not ever see man ruling over all things now, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels, that through God's grace he should die for everyone. We see him now crowned with glory and honour because of the death he suffered. It was only right that God who creates and preserves all things should make Jesus perfect through suffering in order to bring many sons to share in his glory. For Jesus is the one who leads them to salvation. He purifies people from their sins, and both he and those who are made pure all have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. He says to, them, to God, I will tell my brothers what you have done. I will praise you in their meeting. He also says, I will put my trust in God. And he also says, here I am with the children that God has given me. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared in their human nature. He did this that through, through his death he might destroy the devil who has the power over death. And in this way set free those who were slaves to their lives because of the fear of death. For it is clear that it is not angels that he helps. Instead, as the scripture says, he helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had to become like his brothers in every way in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in service to God so that the people's sins would be forgiven. And now he can help those who are being tempted because he himself was tempted and suffered. Amen. <coughs> We're going to sing our next item of praise as the deer pants for war.
warning signs are everywhere. Driving along the road the other day to uh, Belfast, the warning signs, slow down, keep your speed, and then you get on the motorway, keep your distance, and then they have big warning signs up, check your pipes in case there's frozen pipes. There's warning signs everywhere. Even in your front of your dashboard, the engine management light warning. It'll tell you if your tires are deflated a little bit or the engines needing coolant. Warning signs everywhere. Weather warning. Nearly every day there's a weather warning, isn't there? Yellow warning and red and amber and you don't know what they mean. I just wait and look out and see. Just look out and don't get too worried about them. Here's a warning sign. Caution. This sign has sharp edges. Do not touch the edges of this sign. That's all it says. You wouldn't need a sign to tell you the sharp edges. Or here's the one I found yesterday when I was ironing. <laughs> Do not iron while wearing the shirt. <laughs> Warning. And here in Hebrews chapter 2, it's not the easiest chapter, but we get a warning. And the warning is that we must pay the most careful attention to what we have heard so that we do, do not drift away. When I was at school as a teacher and as a pupil, you would hear the words, are you paying attention? <coughs> Sit up and pay attention. Did you ever say that, Barbara? <laughs> no. <laughs> pay attention. And the writer of Hebrews is telling the church to pay attention because they were like that little boat. They were drifting away. Because the people around them were saying, you don't need to worship God. Come back and be a Jew. You don't need Jesus. And then the Romans were saying, you don't need to be a Christian. Worship Nero or whoever the emperor is. You don't need to worship God. And the people were losing their jobs because they were Christians. Because nobody, they just didn't like these new Christians. And so the Christians were under pressure to give up worshipping together. And give up following Jesus. And so the writer would give them a warning. Don't give up. Listen to what you've heard. And what did they hear? And what did we hear last week? Well, we heard that Jesus is better. Last week we said that Jesus is revealed in Scripture. That he's better than the angels. The angels can't save us. He is the Son of God who is the exact replica of the Father God. And he's the one who died. And he is the one who is in heaven. So Jesus is better. Don't we know all this? I want to bring you back now. Imagine you're on an airplane this afternoon at Belfast. And you get your seat and you put your bags up in the overhead locker. And you sit down and then you hear the announcement. Please pay attention to these safety instructions. And the air stewards start to go through, follow the lights and where the oxygen masks are and where the um, life jackets are. How many of you actually ever listen? I've got my hand up. I don't. I've heard it before. Are we a bit like that when it comes to Jesus? We've heard it all. And we're like the people on this flight. They're just sitting around. They're putting in their headphones. They're falling asleep. They're looking through the magazine, the duty free, to see what the bargains they can get. And we don't listen. So is it any wonder the writer is saying, pay attention. Listen up. And so in chapter 2, he would tell us a few more things about Jesus. First of all, he would say Jesus is our brother. Now, brothers are a lot in the news recently. Harry and William. They're not maybe the best example of brothers at the moment. I think that's to put it mildly. But what did Jesus say? Or what did the writer say here in Hebrews? That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. If you believe in Jesus today, you trusted in Jesus, Jesus called you his brother. Imagine, or sister. And then in verse 17, therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every way. 
Jesus is your brother. And I'm not being irreverent there. Maybe we think that's a bit irreverent. But it says here in Scripture that Jesus is our brother. That we're adopted into his family. And that Jesus is our brother. And the way an older brother looks out for us, that's the way Jesus looks out for us. And we have that intimate relationship with our brother. We're brothers and sisters with Jesus. Jesus became our brother. We just sang a few moments ago. You're my friend, you're my brother. Jesus is your brother. And that means he cares for you and that he understands what you're going through. Jesus was a hundred percent human being, but he was also a hundred percent God. He wasn't fifty percent God and fifty percent man. He was God and man in one. And he shared our humanity. He was the same as you and me. There's babies born every minute. But there was only one Jesus. And he's not one amongst millions and millions of babies. He is the Son of God. He is our brother. He belongs to us and we belong to him. But you know sometimes what we do to those relatives that we just can't be bothered about. You know those 20 second cousins removed, twice removed. You keep them at a distance. We all do it to some family members, don't we? Do we do the same to Jesus? Keep him at a distance. Send him a Christmas card, maybe. Jesus is our brother. And he's one of us. And we should treat him like a brother. Because he loves us, he accepts us, he forgives us, he brings us hope, he brings us help. Jesus is our brother. And then in verse 18 it would say, he became like us and he suffered and was tempted and he is able to help us when we suffer. Jesus knows what it's like when someone you love dies. His friend Lazarus died. Jesus knows what it's like to be tired and he sleeps on a boat. Jesus knows what it's like to be hungry and Satan would come and try to offer him bread to eat in the wilderness. Jesus knows what it's like when friends let you down and people deny you. Jesus understands what you're going through. No matter what you're going through today in church, Jesus stands with you ready to help as your brother. And he loves you. Jesus, your brother. But Jesus is more than a brother. He is the great high priest. In the Old Testament, once a year, a high priest went into the temple and went into a special part of the temple called the Holy of Holies. And they brought blood with them. And they sprinkled the blood over the altar. And that blood was to take away the sins of the people. And every year the high priest had to go into the temple and sprinkle this blood to take away the sins of the people. What did Jesus do? Jesus became the Lamb. And he died and shed his own blood to forgive us for our sins. So in verse 17 we read, Jesus became the faithful and merciful high priest in the service to God so that people's sins could be forgiven. Jesus is more than your brother. He is the, the priest who died, who shed his blood so that we could be forgiven. He took all of our punishment upon himself. And he's more than that, he's faithful. And he's merciful. Jesus understands and he practices mercy. He is the one who lifts up the fallen. He is faithful in carrying out his duties. And Jesus is the one who brings forgiveness. He's the great high priest. He's our brother. But Jesus is also the leader here in these verses, we're told. Jesus did all this in order to bring many sons to glory. For Jesus is the one who leads them to salvation. Jesus is the one who leads people. Who are you following today? You could follow people on TikTok and Twitter and Facebook, I'm sure. 
You could follow football teams and you could follow politicians. But are you following Jesus? Jesus is the one who leads us to salvation. Jesus is the one who leads us to heaven. Jesus is the one who leads us to glory. And he did that and does that through his death. Jesus is the one who tasted death for you and me. And only followers of Jesus will get to heaven. And Jesus, as he died, defeated sin, we're told here in these verses. So that death has no fear over us. There are a lot of people who fear death. I meet them through the course of my work. I want to bring you maybe to a palliative care ward or a Marie Curie hospital or the bedside of someone who is dying. And I am able to say the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And that's the way to heaven. As your minister, I have one main concern for the people in Mountjoy and Drumlina. And my one concern is that people would be ready for death when the time comes. That's why you pay me. That's why I'm called to be your minister. So that when death comes, people are ready. And the way to be ready is to follow Jesus, who will lead us to salvation as we trust in him. And so today Jesus would say to you, will you come and follow me if I would call your name? Will you follow Jesus? Are you up for that? I trust that together we will follow Jesus. And he will lead us home. Not only is Jesus our brother and the high priest, but he's also the king. But we see Jesus, and when he lived on earth, he didn't look like a king. He was made a little lower than the angels. He didn't look like a king. But for the death that he suffered, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Jesus is crowned with glory. He is a king. Only a king wears a crown. And Jesus is the king today. And one day that king will return in glory and take all who belong to him to home in glory. And so we need to be ready to meet him as the king, the king of eternity. So is it any wonder the writer of Hebrews 2 would say, pay attention. Otherwise you'll be like a little boat, he said, that will drift along and you will be carried away. So we pay attention to Jesus, who is our brother, who helps us. We pay attention to Jesus, the great high priest, who died for us. We pay attention to Jesus, the leader, who will lead us home to heaven. And we pay attention to Jesus, the king, and worship him. Jesus, you see, is simply the best. No one quite like him. So come to him. Stay close to him. Ground yourself in the Saviour's love. Don't drift away. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Don't drift away. Let's respond to God's word as we sing appropriately. Will your anger hold in the storms of life so that we don't drift away? Let's stand as the music goes.
Father, may each one of us be anchored to Jesus. May our souls be anchored to Jesus, our brother, who loves us and cares for us. May we be anchored to Jesus, the great high priest, who died to take away our sins. May we be anchored to Jesus, the leader, who will lead us home to glory. And may we be anchored to Jesus, the king, who deserves our worship. And now may we all know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit with us, this day and forevermore.